So hello, Marianne Williamson. Hi, how are you? Very good. Thank you for, for joining us today. Um, you wrote actually many New York Times bestsellers, and, and your latest one is The Shadow Effect. What would you say is its contribution to the world, this book? There are people sometimes who, in the name of spirituality, only want to talk about the positive, only want to talk about the good, just as there are other people who only want to talk about the bad and only want to talk about the guilt. Mm -hmm. And a, a spirituality, as well as any psychotherapeutic technique, that rests on an essential truth is one that notes the darkness and deals with the darkness, but does not dwell on the darkness. So you can't just put poor pink paint, you know, poor pink paint all over your life and pretend that everything's great. You have to actually look at the things that aren't great. You have to look at your own, what is in Alcoholics Anonymous called your character defects. You have to take your own, as they say in AA, fearless moral inventory. So that is essentially what shadow work is. It's where you don't run away from a, an appropriate investigation of the places in your own personality and in the world around you that need work, that need addressing, that need tending to, that need correction, uh, that need healing. And then at the same time, just as it's important not to be in denial about your own darkness, it's also important not to be in denial about your own light. And from a spiritual perspective, what that means is you note that which is wrong with you. You notice that which is your defect. You notice that which is the place where you are out of integrity or out of whatever you see as your truth and your love and your ethics and your moral center. And yet you realize that the universe is merciful, the universe is good, and there is a principle of atonement. And of course, both uh, in Catholicism, the way Catholics regularly go to confession, in Judaism, there is the notion of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which is the holiest day of the year. And in Alcoholics Anonymous, of course, it's a program which includes a making of amends. These are all the same thing. This is where you look at your mistake and you, you ask for forgiveness. You recognize it. You atone for the error. And you know that when this occurs, healing happens, just like a healing happens if you cut your finger. Healing happens on a personal level in terms of our character and our psyche, but only when we've atoned for it. Just as you, if you know, if you have a, if you have a broken elbow, the doctor doesn't ask to see your finger. So when you have a, a broken soul in some area, you can't just talk about some other aspect of your character. You have to say, I own this. I own my anger, or I own my dishonesty, or I own my uh, procrastination, or I own my lack of ethics, or I own my greed, or I own my selfishness. I own my domineering personality. I. Uh, own my, uh, whatever it is. And that's the, sh the ultimate shadow work from a spiritual perspective. And you make amends and you uh, pray to have this character defect removed. You mm -hmm. say, dear God, I get that I have this in my personality and I, I don't want to. I, I want this taken away. And then what happens is very interesting, this sort of alchemy of personal transformation. Because what will then happen is that every situation that could possibly tempt you into that behavior within yourself will come up and it will be very obvious and you will see that you have a choice which part of your own personality to play, you know? Each of us have the capacity in any moment to be loving and compassionate and serene and also each of us has the capacity to be you know, not a very nice person. Right. And we, so we begin to see that we have this choice mm -hmm. and we begin to learn the ways through a change in our thinking that ultimately trickles down to a real realignment of our nervous system and we become healed people. We become better. We become in the area of our personality where we used to get it wrong, we have the chance to get it right. And it behooves us to remember that when a bone is broken and it is put back together, grows back together, it's actually stronger in that place than it was before it was broken. So some of that applies as well to our personality. Sometimes those places within us where we become very strong and very sort of shining examples of our own creative possibility in life, sometimes it's a place where we used to not be that at all, but we, we learn sometimes painfully um, that, number one, the first way of being was not workable, was not sustainable, was not helpful. And um, number two, we learned, you know, that through the grace of God, uh, through... Uh, 
through love and the beneficence and mercy of the universe, we can we can change and we can grow and we be, can become better human beings. Yeah, but it, it can sure be a scary journey. I mean, I remember in the Return to Love, you said that we're afraid of our you know own power and, and shining our own light. But but going and, and, and kind of jumping in in this in the shadow is very scary. And some people um, are receiving the book like it's too you know it's too dark for them. Like they have a hard time to actually even listen to it or read it because they're confronted. I mean, what would you have to say? What kind of advice would you have for for these people? Well, I think it's a very mature and grown up. <laughs> Uh, and conscious thing to do to face your own shadow, mm -hmm. uh, to sit, whether it's in therapy or in, in a spiritual context, and have to look at your own stuff. Uh, but you come to understand as you mature and evolve that what's really scary is living a life in which you don't look at it. Because that means that you are looking, you are living a life um, in which your own subconscious um, uh, urges, addictive urges, Uh, urges that have to do not with self-love but self-hate, self-sabotage, those things you do uh, that move you away from peace and joy, not towards it, they run your life. That's what should scare us. <laughs> the idea that I'm scared of looking at my own darkness is, is, you know, it's an immature view because what we should be scared of is the life that we continue to live where we are constantly self-sabotaging, we are constantly going back to the same mistakes and the same dramas and the same stuff over and over and over again for no other reason than we haven't uh, brought this stuff to light. So, you know, if you're in therapy or any serious spiritual growth work and it's never painful, you're not at the right therapist. Mm -hmm. And also you want to remember that the same voice that would say, oh, it's too dark for me, hello, that's the same voice that leads us to mess up our lives to begin with. So you, you, you could sort of at some point in a, in a real journey decide to become your own best friend. You decide to commit to yourself. And you realize that there's a liar inside you. You know, if, if you're fat and there's a voice that says, I really want that whole gallon of ice cream, that's not your friend talking. It's your appetite talking. Mm -hmm. But you're a food addict, so it doesn't mean anything. And that's true in a lot of our lives There's a voice that says, do this or do that, and you come to understand, that's not my friend, because if I do that, I'll blow it. I'll blow it with my spouse. I'll blow it with my child. I'll blow it with my boss, or I'll blow it with my employee. So is it painful to look at the place in you that would even be tempted to, to sabotage your life that way? Yeah, of course it is. But if you go to the gym, it's a little painful to stretch those muscles sometimes, but if you don't, you know you didn't really get a workout. So there's a kind of immaturity in, a, uh, in the way a lot of people talk about a path, and You know, it, it just is what it is. Uh, I, I'm not judging it or criticizing it, but neither should we coddle it, you know. It's, it's too late. It's too late in our lives for that, and it's certainly too late in the history of the world. We, we really need to take our evolution, I think, more seriously than that. Especially right now. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, with the, with the, the events happening, you know, what, what do you think this current events and this crisis, is, what is its effect on the world? <clears throat> What's happening collectively is what's ha exactly what happens individually. You know, all that a nation or a planet, a human race is, is a collection of individuals. So the, the rules of consciousness apply to groups uh, collectively just as it applies individually. And what we see in our lives is a reflection of where we are. Mm -hmm. Look at something like an oil spill. Um, hello, we have not treated the earth with reverence. Mm -hmm. We have not treated other species with reverence. We have not treated the lives of our own grandchildren with reverence. Uh, we have, for the sake of our addiction, which is, goes deeper than an addiction to oil, our addiction to money, our addiction to profit, mm -hmm. uh, has run things to such an extent that we would recklessly allow for deep, deep, real, uh, 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 deep water drilling while not uh, very consciously demanding Um, that before that occurs, if it is to occur, uh, that there be the technology and other resources available to handle a worst-case scenario if one were to occur. So this is what's happened. You know, we can look at it from an immature view and say, oh, the problem is the oil spill. Mm -hmm. But I think more and more people realize, no, the problem is the behavior of human beings that would have only been reasonably um, assumed to one day at least possibly, produce exactly the situation it's produced. And, and my prayer uh -huh. is that we will see it this way. 
you know, you were talking, you said you come from France. Well, in both France and the United States, we've got all kinds of domestic uh, uh, nuclear plants, thank you very much, where our concern about the possibility of worst-case scenarios should be at least as, uh, as passionate as our concern about worst-case scenarios with oil drilling. And yet, I, I, I don't know what's going on in France, but I know in the United States, we've had enough uh, near misses, what you might call near misses, uh, that this is a conversation we should be having. The problem is, you know, and it goes back to what you said about not looking. The problem is how many people would say, okay, what we really need to do is just stop the oil leak and go on. And that's, you know, people who say, you look at the economic drops and let's just fix it and go on. And that's what an immature growth pattern is. You don't want to really look at the deep down stuff that's the deeper cause of all this. And so what we do collectively is exactly what you said a lot of people do individually. I don't want to look at it. It's too painful to look at. Mm -hmm. Well, you be careful with that one because that means that you are dooming yourself um, not only for the lesson to come around again, but uh, if necessary, come around again even uh, more loudly. Um, and more dangerously until you're willing to get the lesson. Right. So what is some of the first question that we can, we should ask ourselves in those moments of, of darkness? Well, this is a fascinating way that our personal transformation <clears throat> intersects with our global transformation. So the first question is, what can I do? Where am I out? Not where other people are out. Where am I out? What, what part of my personality um, is still not what it should be? Where do I judge others? Where do I blame others? Um, a deep uh, work on the world begins with a deep work on ourselves. Where can I, as Gandhi would say, reduce myself to zero? Mm -hmm. And that takes a serious spiritual path. I think a lot of people are kind of into the kind of dilettante hodgepodge um, um, mm -hmm. uh, form of spiritual progress. I myself am a student of A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. But A Course in Miracles is only one of many serious spiritual journeys. But it's a lot more than just looking at a candle. It's a lot more than just taking a relaxing walk through the woods. Um, probably most people who are listening to this right now know what their spiritual journey is, know what path works for them, may or may not be walking it with the level of commitment that is called for. Um, and if you don't know what your uh, path is and you pray to be shown, then books will literally fall off shelves. 